The Cube presents Ignite 22. Brought to you by Palo Alto Networks. Greetings from the MGM Grand Hotel in beautiful Las Vegas. It's the Cube, live day two of our coverage of Palo Alto Networks Ignite 22. Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante. Dave, what can I say? This has been a great couple of days. The amount of content we have created and shared with our viewers on the Cube is second to none. Well, the cloud has completely changed the way that people think about security. Yeah. You know, at first it was like, oh, the cloud, how can that be secure? And I realized, wow, actually, Cloud is pretty secure if we do it right. And so shared responsibility model. And partnerships are critical. Partnerships that. are critical, especially as more and more organizations are multi-cloud by default, right, these days. We're going to be bring Google into the conversation. Josh Haslett joins us, strategic partnership manager at Google. Welcome, great to have you, Josh. Hi, Lisa, thanks for having me here. Thank so you are a secret squirrel from Palo Alto Networks. Talk to me a little bit about your background <laughs> and about your role at Google in, in terms of partnership management. Sure, I feel like we need to add that to my title. You should, uh, secret squirrel. <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, so I, as a matter of fact, uh, I've been at Google for two and a half years. Prior to that I was at Palo Alto Networks. I was managing the business development relationship with Google. And I was kind of at the inception of when Nikesh came in and, and decided that we needed to think about how to do security in a new way from a platform standpoint, right? And so it was exciting because when I started with the partnership, we were focusing on still securing you know, workloads in the cloud with uh, next generation firewall. And then as we went through acquisitions that Palo Alto added, it expanded the capabilities of what we could do from cloud security. And so it was very exciting you know, to, to make sure that we could onboard with Google Cloud, take a look at how not only Palo Alto was enhancing their solutions as they built those and delivered those from Google Cloud, but then how did we help customers adopt cloud in a more easy fashion uh, by making things uh, you know, more tightly integrated. And so that's really been a lot of what I've been involved in, which has been exciting to see the growth of both organizations as we see customers shifting to cloud transformation. And then how do they deploy these new uh, methodologies and tools from a security perspective to embrace this new way of working and this new way of you know, creating applications and doing digital transformation. Important since work is no longer um, a place, it's an activity, organizations have, have to be able to cater to the distributed workforce. Of course, the, the, the workforce has to be able to access everything that they need to, but it has to be done in a secure way, regardless of what kind of company you are. Yeah, you're right, Lisa, it's interesting. I mean, the pandemic has really changed and accelerated that transformation. I think, you know, really remote working had started previous to that, and I think Nikesh called that out in the keynote too, right? He, he really said that this has been ongoing for a while, but I think, uh, you know, organizations had to figure out how to scale. Um, and that was something that they weren't as prepared for. And a lot of the technology that was deployed for VPN connectivity or supporting remote work, that was fixed hardware. And so cloud deployment and cloud architectures, specifically with Prisma Access, um, really enabled this transformation to happen in a much faster you know, manner. And where we've come together is how do we make sure that customers, no matter what device, what user, what application you're accessing, uh, as we take a look at ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access 2.0, um, how can we come together to partner to make sure the customers have that wide range of coverage and capability? How, how do you, how would you describe, Josh, Google's partner strategy, generally, and specifically, you know, in the world of cyber, and what makes it unique and different? Yeah, so that's a great question. I think, you know, from Google Cloud perspective, we heard TK mention this in the keynote with Nikesh, you know, we focus on, on building a secure platform, first and foremost, right? We want to be a trusted cloud for customers to deploy on. And so, you know, we find that as customers do one of two things, they're looking at, you know, reducing cost as they move to cloud uh, and consolidate workloads, or as they embrace innovation and look at, you know, leveraging things like BigQuery for analytics and, you know, at machine learning for the way that they want to innovate and stay ahead of the competition, they have to think about how do they secure in a new way. And so, not only do we work on how do we secure on platform, we work with trusted partners to make sure that customers have you mentioned it earlier, Dave, the shared security model, right? How do they take a look at their applications and their workloads and this new way of working as they go to CI CD pipelines, they start thinking about DevSecOps, how do they integrate tooling that is frictionless and seamless for their, for their teams to deploy, but allows them to quickly embrace uh, that cloud transformation journey? And so, yes, partners are critical to that. The other thing is, you know, we find that, you mentioned earlier, Lisa, that customers are multi-cloud. Right, that's kind of the, the new normal as we look at enterprises today. And so Google Cloud's going to do a great job at securing 
our platform, but we need partners that can help customers deploy policy that embraces not only the things that they put in Google Cloud, but as they're in their transformation journey, how that embraces the estates that are in data centers, the things that are still on-prem, and really this is about making sure that the applications, no matter where they are, the databases, no matter where they are, and the users, no matter where they are, are all secure in that new framework of deploying and embracing innovation on public cloud. One of the things that almost everybody from Palo Alto Networks talks about is their partnering strategy, their acquisition strategy, integrations, and I was doing some research, there's over 50 joint integrations that Google Cloud and Palo Alto Networks have. You talked about Zero Trust Network Access 2.0, that was announced yesterday. Correct. Give us a flavor of what that is and what does it deliver that 1.0 did not? <laughs> well, great, and what I'd like to do is touch a little bit on those 50 integrations because it's Please. been you know, a, a building rolling thunder, shall we say, as far as how have we taken a look at customers embracing the cloud. Uh, the first thing was we took a look at how do we make sure that Palo Alto solutions are easier for customers to deploy and to orchestrate in Google Cloud, making their journey uh, to embracing cloud seamless and easy. The second thing was how could we make that deployment and the infrastructure even more easy to adopt by doing first party integrations. So earlier this year we announced Cloud IDS, Intrusion Detection System, uh, where we actually have first party uh, directly in our console of customers being able to simply select they want to turn on inspection of the traffic that's running on Google Cloud and it leverages the threat detection capability from Palo Alto Networks. So we've gone from third party integration alone to first party integration and that really takes us to you know, the direction of what we're seeing customers need to embrace now, which is this zero trust strategy. And Zero Trust 2.0 helps customers do a number of things. The first is, you know, we don't want to just verify a user and their access into the environment once. It needs to be continuous inspection, right? Because their state could change. I think you know, the, the teams were talking about some really good ways of addressing, you know, for instance, TSA checkpoints, right? And how does that experience look? Um, we need to make sure that we're constantly evaluating that user's access into the environment, and then we need to make sure that the content that's being accessed or uh, you know, loaded into the environment is inspected. So we need continuous content inspection. And that's where our partnership really comes together very well, is not only can we take care of any app, any device, any user, and especially as we take a look at you know, embracing uh, contractor, uh, like use cases for instance, where we have managed devices and unmanaged devices, we bring together Beyond Corp and Prisma Access to take a look at how can we make sure any device, any user, any application is secure throughout, and then we've got content inspection of how that ZTNO, ZTNA 2.0 experience looks like. Josh, that threat data that you just talked about, yeah. uh, how, who has access to that? Um, is it available to any partner, any customer? How, it seems like there's gold in them Nar Hills, so. There but, is. But, this could be gold going both ways. <laughs> so how, how do you adjudicate and, and, and how do you make sure that, first of all, that that data is accessible for, for good and not in how do you protect it against you know, wrong use? Well, this is one of the great things about partnering with Palo Alto because technically the, the threat intelligence is coming from their ingestion of malware, known threats and unknown threats, right, uh, into their technology. Wildfire, for instance, is a tremendous example of this where Unit 42 does you know, analysis on unknown threats um, based upon what Nikesh said on stage, they've taken their, I think he said 27 days to identification and remediation down to less than a minute, right? So they've been able to take the intelligence of what they ingest from all of their existing customers, the unknown vulnerabilities that are identified, uh, quickly assessing what those look like, and then pushing out information to the rest of their customers so that they can remediate and protect against those threats. So we get this shared intelligence from the way that Palo Alto leverages that capability, and we've brought that natively into Google Cloud with uh, cloud intrusion detection. So, okay, so I'm, I'm, I don't know why I have high frequency trading in my mind, because it used to be you know, like the norm was, oh, it's going to take a year to identify an intrusion. And, and now it's down to, you know, take, was down to 27 days, now it's down to a minute, now it's not, that's best practice. And I'm, again, I'm thinking high frequency trading, how do I beat the <laughs> speed of light? And that's kind of where we're headed, right? right. Um, and so that's why he said one minute's not enough. We have to keep going. That's right. So, you guys got your best people working on that? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, so Palo Alto Networks, uh, you know, when we take a look at what 
uh, Nikesh said from stage, he talked about using machine learning and AI to get ahead of what, we, what they look at as far as predictability, um, not only about behaviors in the environment, so things that are not necessarily known threats, but things that aren't behaving properly in the environment, and you can start to detect based on that. Uh, the second piece of it then is um, a lot of that technology is built on Google Cloud, so we're leveraging, they're leveraging the capabilities that come together with um, you know, aggregation of, of logs, the file stitching across the entire environment from uh, the endpoint through to cloud uh, operations, the things that they uh, detect for network uh, content inspection. Um, putting all those files together to understand you know, where has the threat vector entered, how has it gone lateral inside the environment, and then how do you make sure that you remediate all of those points of intrusion. Um, and so yeah, it's been exciting to see uh, how our product teams have worked together to continue to advance the capabilities for speed for customers. And speed is, secure speed is critical. We had the opportunity this morning to speak with Lee Claridge, the Chief Product Officer, and you know, one of the things that I had heard about Lee is that despite all of the challenges in cybersecurity and the ex amorphous expansion of the threat network and the sophistication of the adversaries, he's really optimistic about what it's going to enable organizations to do. I see you smiling. Do you share that optimism? <laughs> I, I do. I think you know when you bring um, when you bring leaders together to tackle big problems, um, I think you know, we've got the right teams working on the right things, and we understand the problems that the customers are facing. And so, you know, from a, a Google Cloud perspective, um, we understand that partnering with Palo Alto Networks helps to make sure that that optimism continues. Um, you know, we work on continuous innovation when it comes to Google Cloud security framework, um, but then partnering with Palo Alto brings additional capabilities to the table. Vision for the for the partnership. Where do you want to see it go? What's, what we're two to five years down the road. What's it look like? Maybe two to three years. Let's go. Well, it was interesting. I think Nier was the one that mentioned on stage about you know how AI is going to yeah. start replacing us in our main jobs, right? I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think as we look forward, um, we see that our teams are going to continue to help with automation, remediation, and we're going to have the humans working on things that are more interesting and important. Um, and so that's an exciting place to go because today the reality is that we are understaffed um, in cybersecurity across the industry. And we just can't hire enough people um, to make sure that we can detect, remediate, and secure you know, every uh, user uh, endpoint and environment out there. So uh, it's exciting to see that we've got a capability to move in a direction to where we can make sure that we get ahead of the threat actors yeah, so he said, uh, within five years, your SOC will be AI-based. And, and basically, he elaborated, saying there's a lot of stuff that you're doing today that you're not going to be doing tomorrow. That's uh, true. And that's going to continue to be a moving target. I would think Google is probably ahead in that game, and ahead of most, right? I mean, <laughs> you guys were there early. I mean, I remember when Hadoop was all the rage, like just at the beginning, because like, yeah, you know, Google was like, you know, no, we're not doing Hadoop anymore. That's like old news. So you tended to be, I don't know, at least five, maybe seven years ahead of the industry. So I imagine you're using a lot of those AI techniques in your own business today. Absolutely, I mean, I think you see it in our consumer products, uh, and you certainly see it in the, the capabilities we make available to enterprise as far as how they can innovate on our cloud. And we want to make sure that we continue to provide those capabilities, you know, not only for the tools that we build, but the tools the customers use. What's the, as we kind of get towards the end of our conversation here, we, we talk about zero trust as, as a journey, as an approach, it's not a product, it's not a tool. What is the, who's involved in the zero trust journey from the customer's <clears throat> perspective? Is this solely with the CISOs, CSOs, CIOs, or is this at the CEO level going, we have to be a data company, but we have to be a secure data company 24 seven? It's interesting, as you've seen mal malware, uh, phishing, ransomware attacks, yeah. right? This is not only just a CISO, CIO conversation, it's a board level conversation. And so, you know, the way to address this new way of working where we have very distributed environments where you can't create a perimeter anymore, um, you need to strategize with zero trust. And so, continuously, when we're talking to customers, we're hearing that as a main initiative, uh, you know, from the CIO's office and from the board level. Got it, last question. The upgrade path for existing customers from 1.0, ZTNA 1.0 to 2.0, how simple is that? 
it's easy. Uh, you know, when we is take there a look, easy button? Uh, so here's the great thing. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Palo Alto, right, building Prisma Access uh, has really taken what was traditional security that was an on-prem or a data center deployed strategy to cloud-based. And so we've worked with customers like Princeton University who had to quickly transition from in-person learning to distance learning, um, find a way to ramp their staff, their faculty, and their students. And we were able to, you know, Palo Alto uh, deployed on Google Cloud's, you know, network. Uh, that solution in very quick order and had those, you know, everybody back up and running. Um, so deployment uh, and upgrade path is is simple when you look at cloud deployed architectures to address zero trust network. That's awesome. Some of those some of those use cases that came out of the pandemic were mind blowing, but also really set the table for other organizations to go. Yes, this can be done, and it doesn't have to take forever. Because frankly, where security is concerned, we don't have time. That's right. And it's so much faster than traditional architectures where you had to procure hardware, yeah. deploy it, configure it, and then you know, push agents out to all the uh, endpoints and, and get your users provisioned. In this case, we're talking about cloud delivered, right? So um, I've seen you know, with Palo Alto deploying for customers that run on Google Cloud, they've deployed tens of thousands of users in a very short order. You know, we're talking, it was, it's not months anymore, it's not weeks anymore, it's days. Mm has to be days. Josh, it's been such a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you for stopping by and talking with Dave and me about Google Cloud, Palo Alto Networks. In, in addition to Secret Squirrel, I feel like when you were describing your background that you're like the love child of Palo Alto Networks and Google Cloud. You might That's, put that on your card too. That is a huge compliment. I really appreciate that, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Josh. It's been a pleasure being here with you. Thank you. Oh, likewise. For Josh Haslett and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live coverage for emerging and enterprise tech.